everyone, this is Shelly from Koala Knits and Knacks, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful gingham baby blanket. I've used Craft Smart yarn um, in uh, three different colors, and you need two balls of each color. You'll, you won't use um, the full two balls, but you'll, you need them because you need to dig into the second ball. Okay, so this blanket measures 41 inches by 41 inches, um, and it's just a, a lovely, it's, it's, made with the tube so it's double double thickness so um, it's just luxurious and beautiful um, any mom would love to receive this for her baby okay and it also makes you know if you if you don't want to make it as a baby blanket make it as just a, a couch blanket just a lap blanket that you throw over your over your legs when you're cold or I always like to take a blanket with me when I'm in the car so it's a car blanket <laughs> um, whatever you like it's just a beautiful size for that I used my Addy um, 22 needle machine and my Addy 46 needle machine. If you have a central and it's got 48 needles, you can you can use that as well. You'll, you'll I'm sure um, it'll just be a little bit bigger, um, but not not by much. So I'm sure you'll be fine using your central machine if that's what you have. Um, and I also give instructions on how to make an adult blanket in the in the video. So um, go ahead and grab your supplies and have fun making. A gingham baby blanket. Um, if you like the crochet bottom that I've done, um, then go ahead and look for that uh, tutorial on my channel as well. I um, have put a, a tutorial on how to do the V-stitch um, border on a knitted blanket. So uh, you can look for that. It would have made my, my uh, video way too long to have put that on this one as well. So go ahead and look for that if you want to do um, a crocheted border. If not, you can add um, fringes or you can just leave it as is after you um, join it all together. It's beautiful that way too. So go get your supplies and then let's get started. All right, so now that you have your um, project yarn ready and your machines ready, we're gonna go ahead and start. So again, you're gonna need a light color of yarn, a medium color and a dark color, all um, coordinating together, of course. As you see in my blanket, just follow the same kind of, um, of uh, like you can do white with gray and black, or you can do two tones of green and an ivory or a white. Um, whatever your three color choices are, um, we're going to uh, start with our narrow panel on our 22 needle machine. And for every panel, we're gonna need waste yarn at the beginning and the end of our project. So let's go ahead and bring our last white needle and our first black needle in line with our yarn feeder. And of course, if you're new to my channel, you'll see that I color this um, red dividing peg that's between the last white and the first black with a permanent black marker. Need to do it again, because it's wearing out. And we're going to take our contrasting color of waste yarn Put the end in the middle, we're going to loop that around our first black needle, then in front of the second, or pardon me, behind, then in front, and behind, in front, and behind, all the way around. Until you get to the last white needle, and it should be behind that last white needle, okay? Open your yarn guide, put your yarn inside of there, shut the latch, and we're gonna do um, seven or eight rows of waist yarn. I always do seven, no less than seven. Okay, one more, and halfway around that, I'm going to change my row counter to zero so it's ready when I get started. Okay, so I'm gonna to come to the beginning here. I saw that black marked um, peg coming around, so I'm going to now grab my scissors here. I'm gonna cut my waist yarn, open my latch, put that between the last white and the first black needle and into the center of my machine then I'm gonna go ahead and grab my first color which is the darkest color that you have, okay? For me, my dark color is the teal so I'm going to open my latch. I'm going to put my end into the middle of my sheen between the last white and the first black needle and I'm going to just do three or four needles and then I'm gonna take the end of both, the, both ends of that working yarn and I'm gonna pull it snug, push that one down underneath that black um, divider there. I do that on all my rows uh, just because I like those stitches to be even tension from the rest of the project, okay? And then I'm going to slowly crank up this first row. And keep going for 12 rows. That's three. I mean, I mean five, this is five. It clicks on six, so I'm gonna finish six and seven. 
except for partway through, usually around three or four, I just give this a little tie. Just that's, um, you don't want to put a full knot in there because that's uh, just attached to your waist yarn and you're going to remove the waist yarn. So we're going to do 12 rows of this dark color. And one more after this. It clicked on 12. I'm going to finish row 12. And then I'm going to cut this yarn. I'm going to grab my medium color. I'm going to open my latch, put that yarn in between the last white, the first black, insert my medium color yarn, the same way I did the first in between the um, last white and the first black. I'm going to um, hold those two ends, do three or four needles, then I'm going to do the same thing I did in the beginning. And then I'm going to crank out 33 rows of this color. So we're gonna alternate 12 colors of the dark, 33 of the mid-tone, okay? So that was the mid-tone that you just added. After three or four rows, you're going to take this and you're going to tie a tight knot in there. Because this is your working yarn now and you want to make sure that that stays. I, I usually only do two, but I did three on that one because it wasn't tightening properly. So there we go. And then I, I always snip mine off a little bit shorter. Okay. And you're going to continue that process. So in, in my, to take a pen and a paper and, and mark down for your narrow panels, you're going to do 12 rows of your, of your darkest color. Then you're going to do 33 rows of your mid-tone color. Now, I don't change my counter every time I change my color. I just make um, a column of, uh, like, on my, on my book, I put um, dark, 12, then medium, 45, because then I'm going to do 33 rows. That'll take me to 45. Then I put a D for dark, and then I go 57, because then that's 12 rows. And I add it up all the way up until I alternating 12 and 33 rows, adding 12 and 33, until I get to 192. Um, each panel is 192 rows. So you're going to keep doing this. You're going to do 12 rows of the dark, 33 rows of the medium, 12 rows of the dark, 33 rows of the medium, um, and continue that pattern until you get to 192 rows. And when you're done that, we will um, add our waist yarn and cast off together. And I'll just tell you right from the beginning, we're going to make four of these panels, okay? We make three large panels and we make four small narrow panels. So go ahead, finish doing that until you get to row 192, alternating 12 rows of dark, 33 rows of medium. And when you get to finish, when you finish your 192nd row, then see me back and we will, we will add the waist yarn and cast off. All right. So how did that go? Good. <laughs> I wish I could hear you. I wish we could talk together. This is, um, uh, our narrow panel. We've got it done. We've got 192 rows. I hope you were able to get that successfully done without any tight stitches. Um, I, I was able to manage that. I got through the whole thing without a, one tucked stitch, but the, the wider panels for me is a different story because my machine does not like the ivory that I'm going to use <laughs> for this blanket, so it takes patience. But anyways, now that we've got our 192 rows, we're going to go ahead and grab our waist yarn that we used, um, and we're going to um, open our latch, put it in there like we did at the beginning, Put it between the last white, the first black needle, close the latch. No need to pull this tight, it's just waist yarn. Um, but we're going to give this just one little slip knot here, just so that it, it, uh, it doesn't unravel, okay? And put that in the middle. Oops, knocked my camera, so sorry. And then we're going to, again, just crank out seven or eight rows, or however many rows you are comfortable with doing, okay? I always do seven or eight. Five. And I'll do one more, seven, and I see my black marker coming around, so I know I stop right there. I cut my yarn end, open my latch, put it between the last white, the first black, close that latch, because if you leave it open, these little needles knock it, and you could break a needle, okay, or break your, break your latch door, so make sure you shut that. Then you're going to crank your needle, or your, your handle, and on the second time around, it comes off, okay? So then I just always just help it off. That last one, sometimes it gets stuck on in. That's okay, you just give it a little bit of, of help, okay? Pull out all these yarn. Oh, I've attached. What's coming out of my machine is my, my tube wrapped around the end of the yarn that is in the ball. So that's uh, that's the problem here. So I'll just get that out of the way. Then you're gonna take your, your panel off your machine and you're gonna stretch it out widthwise. 
and lengthwise and that just puts um, all your stitches in the soft into place and, and softens it up a bit. So um, that is your narrow pattern on your Addy 22. We've got 192 rows. You're going to go ahead and make three more of those panels, okay? So you want four of these in total. It doesn't take too long. So, so go ahead and, and do that and when you're done, we'll see you back, okay? Okay, now that we have our um, smaller panels done, we're going to switch our, our focus to our Addy King. Um, now this is the 46 needle machine, but if you don't have it and you have the Centro um, 48 needle machine, I haven't done this pattern using the Centro 48 and the Addy 22, but I can't see any reason why it won't work. So if I were you, I would go ahead and, and do it. I would, I would use um, your 22 needle and your 40 Eight needle for this project if you don't have the if that's what you have okay but for me we're using the Addy King and we, it's a 46 needle machine and we're going to do the same thing that we did with the Addy 22 except we're going to switch up the colors so for this um for this project the, these panels and you're going to make three of these we're going to um, use our mid tone color our like a medium color um, for the 12 rows and then we're going to switch to our white or our light lightest color and do 33 rows so we're gonna we're going to do the same thing we did with our addy 22 except we're going to do our medium color and our light color so let's just get it started together we're going to bring our our last white and our first black needle in line we're going to put our waist yarn behind that first black needle in front of the next behind and in front all the way around just like we did oops on the addy 22. Okay, this is such a fun pattern because really the blankets look just so gorgeous, but they're really such a simple pattern um, that, you know, I, this is a baby blanket that we're making, of course, but I also make the adult blanket and I'll have to look up the, the number of rows that I do for that, but I'll share that with you at the end. Um, I think it's 300, but let me, let me double check that and at the end of the video, uh, listen for it and, uh, and I'll, I'll let you know. How many rows we do an adult blanket for? I, I made an adult blanket for my brother and one for my sister, and I'm, I've sold one. Um, and that's the extent of the of the large ones that I've made to this point. But but uh, it's exactly the same technique, same. It's just the row count is higher. So we're gonna do seven or eight rows of waist yarn here. I was talking and not counting, so I'm gonna just do one more because um, I'm coming to the end of my little ball here. But before I get to the end, I'm going to change my row counter to zero. And I'm going to now cut off my, my um, end of my waist yarn. Throw that other little piece in the garbage because there's not much left of it. Open my yarn um, guide. I'm going to put my yarn end between the last white and the first black. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab my medium color yarn. Okay, so it's the same one that you used for 33 rows in your um, narrow patterns uh, when, when you did those. But now we're going to use it for 12 rows. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the same thing we did. We're going to um, tighten that so that these few, few first few stitches here are the same tension when you take it off as the others. Give this one little tie. We're going to do 12 rows of this color. Then we're going to switch to our light color and we're going to do 33 rows. Okay. And keep alternating like that until you get to row 192. So um, just, just for record purposes, um, I, when, I, when I get to row 12, I switch it to my light color until I get to row 45 because that's 33 rows. And then I do the, the switch back to this color and I do 12 rows, which takes me to 57. Then I do the next one, which is 33 rows. So it'll take me to 90. And then the next one is 12. It'll take me to 102. Then the next is 33. It will take me to 135. Then 147, 180, 192. Those are the numbers that I look for on my guide before I, I keep switching colors. And when I get that finished, I'm going to um, cast on and put my waist yarn on. Uh, do seven or eight rows of waist yarn and then take it off my machine just like I did for my um, panels that I did on my Addy 22 machine. And then when you're done all of that, you're going to do three panels, three exact panels like that. Then we're going to um, close the ends and then I'll show you how you put it together. Okay, so have fun doing that. Take your time and enjoy it. <laughs> okay, see you soon. All right, so now that we've got all our panels done, we're going to close off the ends with a flat seam. 
So what you're gonna do is, is just unloosen the knot that you put there. You're gonna find your stitch markers. You're gonna need two stitch markers. Now take your waist yarn and whatever loop that's coming out, that's gonna be the first stitch that you're gonna put your, your uh, stitch marker in. Then you're gonna go to the left of that and you'll see that there are where, whatever top loop is that this, this uh, working yarn is attached to, then that's where you're gonna put it, which is that when you see these two stitches, it's the top one, okay? So then you wanna make sure that your two ends are on the outside because trust me, when you get to the end, if they're tucked on the inside, you have to unravel a bit so that you can find them, okay? And I know that this has 22 two stitches all around. You can see those little stitches there that um, are prominent in your waist yarn color. That's why it's important to choose the contrasting color. And then you can see them easily. So I'm gonna count around to my 11th stitch. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I know eleven and twelve are my corner stitches. So I'm gonna go underneath number twelve, then I'm gonna go underneath eleven, pick up that stitch and pull it through the loop on the hook. Then I'm gonna go to the bottom, I'm gonna go to that would be like thirteen, pull it through the loop on the hook, up to what we would call maybe ten. If you're counting and put it through the loop on the hook, it doesn't matter if you hook over to pull it through or if you hook under. It was a question that I had. It doesn't matter how you grab this loop. It just matters that you put it through the loop on the hook, okay? Um, and and uh, get it finished that way. So no matter how you grab it, it's gonna look the same. So thanks for your question. I hope that helped, okay? And so there we go. We're gonna keep going all the way down until we get to the end, making very sure that you don't miss a stitch. So, um, if you're by yourself and you're not talking to someone like I'm talking to you on the camera, <laughs> then you would count as you go down the row, um, making sure you don't forget to count the first one that you put on your hook, um, the loop that's on your hook, okay? And you want to make sure that you have 22 um, because if you don't, then uh, your that row will unravel if you miss a stitch, okay? So now I'm at the end. I'm going to pull up on my bobby pin here, put my um, hook underneath that stitch and work that one. At the end it gets tight, so that's why I like the bobby pins. Then I'm gonna pull up on that one, do the same thing. That was stitch 22. Now I'm gonna take my working yarn, wrap it around, and I'm going to finish off that stitch, okay? And then I'm gonna unravel this. Now this was the easy side, so this, uh, this was the end of my project. Because the end of your project, if you do waste yarn on both ends, the, the, the end of your project that you're working on your machine is the easiest one to take off. The first um, cast on row was harder, and I do have a video um, on my channel showing you how to easily do that. So um, if you wanna look that up and see it, then, then go ahead and do that, and that will help you out. Okay, so we've got our panels made. We have four of these narrow ones, and we have, um, we have three of the wider ones. Now we're gonna go ahead and put them together, okay? Let me just make mention at this point, this is what, this is our, um, our baby blanket that we're making. But if you wanna make a larger blanket that is long enough, um, I didn't write the measurements down in my book, sadly, um, but I, I think if I remember correctly, it was six feet long, um, the adult blanket that I made. And, and there is a picture you can see that uh, on the beginning of the video, I added it. Um, of my sister-in-law <laughs> cozying up underneath it. But um, you're gonna do the exact same thing that we did for the baby blanket, except for you're gonna make uh, five of these narrow panels and you're gonna make four of the wider panels and you're gonna make them 282 rows in, in height, okay? So again, you'll make five of these narrow ones, you're gonna make four of the, of the wider panels and you're gonna do 282 rows and that will get you a beautiful blanket, couch blanket, um, uh, for an adult. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, seam these together. Okay, so I've already put um, all my panels together but the last one just so that I can show you. Okay, and um, I, I intentionally put it together with the lightest color of yarn um, because I wanted to show you what that does. Um, you don't want to do that. The only reason why I was able to do it on this blank is because I'm doing a crochet um, edge around it, so you're not going to see. But if you use the light color of yarn, when you're joining at the top, you're going to see that difference, okay? Um, you're going to see that little white um, light color uh, along your edge because all along your edge around the whole blanket is your mid-tone color and your dark color. So choose one of them. Because um, if you choose one of them to sew your, your sides together, then you don't have this little 
color notch at the at the top of your work that's that's different okay um, so again I did that just so that I could show you you don't see it anywhere else in the blanket because it's an invisible stitch but um, but you do you will see it at the top if you are not going to do um, a fringe or a, a crochet border so um, make sure that you're using one, one of these border colors to to seam your sides together if you're just going to leave it open like that okay um, so I'm going to choose that now I'm going to choose the, the light color, it really doesn't matter, but um, to put this last panel together. Now when you're putting your panels together, um, you, you want to, you've got ends like this, right? Where you've got your end coming off of your panel. Try to, to do it so that you have um, one end on one side and then the other end left for the for the next one next side that you're going to join just because it's nice to have this to tie off the very top because for me i don't i don't start in the very top stitch um i i use this to tie the very top because sometimes i find this little stitch right here is the top stitch it's very hard to get into so i i miss that one every time um so you're going to line up your sides you're going to find find the edge that has the wide part of the V at the bottom on both sides okay um, so that's very important don't don't choose one that's got a point on the and like where the narrow part of the, of the stitch goes down and then the wide part on the other side you got to choose them both so they're that the wide end is going down um, that makes it when when your blanket is all together then it just makes the the rows cohesive as they go across you can't see the break okay so what you're gonna do you're gonna miss this top one if it's too tight to get into. You're gonna go into the next stitch and you're going to go and pick up two bars. So essentially you're going through two stitches. Then you're gonna pull your, your yarn end through. Your yarn end, which is um, the length of your panel and a little bit more, okay? And then I'm gonna go to the second stitch, holding that with my finger like that, or otherwise it gets in the way. So I missed this one. I'm gonna to go to my second stitch and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other two. I'm gonna pull up two bars. And I'm going to bring that through and I don't tighten it yet. I just let it stay loose until I get about 10 or so stitches down. Then um, I'm going to go across and you see where I came out of that stitch. I'm going to go into that stitch and pick up the next two. So wherever you come out, you got to come in. Okay. So I came out of this stitch. I'm going to go and pick up the next two bars. This is called the mattress stitch, I think. <laughs> Yeah, it's the mattress stitch, um, or I like to, I usually refer to it as the invisible stitch because you can't see it, and it's the same on both sides. Um, so whatever you call it, I don't know. I might be wrong actually, but um, but yeah, it's it's the mattress stitch. And so when you're looking at it now, you're gonna say, okay, well this stitch is higher and that stitch is lower. It's not gonna match up, but it does because I've I've got to finish this side right. So there we go. And if you've done all your panels the same amount of rows, 192 rows, it will work out. So I say that in all my videos. Um, you should have no problem having the same length of panels. Now, again, and I've said this before too, when you take it off your machine, you're gonna stretch it widthwise, every panel widthwise and lengthwise. And so one panel you might have stretched just a little bit more pressure than the other, and so it looks longer, and you're gonna line it up, and you're gonna say, oh, this is way longer than the other one. But once you start matching your stitches, it pulls it back together because if you followed the instructions and you've done the same amount of stitches on every panel, it has to line up. Um, it has to line up if you're, if you're not missing a stitch when you're doing this, okay? So now I came down, I came down to my color change point right there and that's gonna work out for this one too. Now, the only difference, actually I'm glad this happened because now you can see. The only difference is sometimes, um, when you do a color change, it jogs up the stitch a little bit. And so sometimes it'll look like it's off. So in order for you to make your, your, um, your, now I'm going to show you one right here. So it's jogged off just a tiny little bit. Um, when I work on that later, I can pull it up and, and even it, but, but you can get that completely even. Um, when you look at this side of the stitch, and you look at this side, you see, okay, they're, they're in line there. So sometimes you've got to grab more than, in this case, I only have to grab the two, but if you had to grab one, just one stitch to make sure that that lined up, 
um, one stitch on one side and two on the other side, then you just make it up um, in the next stitch. So example, if I, if I grabbed two here and I only grabbed one here to make sure that this row lined up, then um, I'm gonna grab one here next time and two here next time. And that's gonna keep me on even ground going down, okay? I'm gonna do um, one more set here and then I'm gonna pull. Pull it tight, okay? All right, so I'm going to pinch the top. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let go of that needle there. I'm gonna grab this working yarn and I'm gonna um, just secure it in my fingers and I'm gonna pinch the top there. And then I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna pull. And there we go. And then I just straighten it out a little bit and, and get it going. And then you'll see that your line has matched up. And sometimes you'll be just slightly off, but most often you can get it exactly where it needs to be. Um, and sometimes uh, what I'll do too, and see, and the reason why it might look off is because um, in my color change here, the half of this stitch is white and half of the stitch is, is green. So um, that's where you see a little bit of a difference. If that bothers you, then just take your needle and, and uh, you can just re before you go, like I would have done it before I did these next two stitches, but you could reinforce it right exactly on that color change, um, just like that, and then continue going down. Um, I, I rarely have to do that, but sometimes if there is a bigger space and I don't like it, um, then, then that's what I will do. Or I'll, you know, try to hide that that little white edge there, but really that's being very, very picky and you don't have to do that, okay? So now what you're gonna do is continue um, this process all the way down your blanket, making sure that you're paying particular attention when you get to your color changes there that, that, um, that that's not stretched out and it's like that, that it's it's um, matching up and, and that you're grabbing this, um, again, two stitches and one if you need to, or two and two, or one, even one and one on both sides, whatever it takes to get that to line up, and then you continue your pattern on down the line, okay? So go ahead and do that. But before we move on, I thought I would, um, I just unravel a little bit, because I, I, I wanna show you how else you can fix that, okay? You can just, um, when you get to that part, just take your needle, slip it underneath that stitch, Just that half of the stitch and then pull that and you continue on down so you've just you've just um like you, when, you, when you do that you mess up the v um as it goes down farther but but you're not going to see that it's just in one little space um and you know what that doesn't happen very often um but if it bugs you that is just one way that you can you can uh, fix it and then you're going to just continue on down just like just like you normally would. So let's just go down a little bit farther um, and see what we can what we can fix here. But make sure you stay on that you like it, your yarn is coming out of this this stitch here now. But make sure you go back to the same row that you were on because you always want to make sure that you're following that same line all the way down and you're not twisting it. Okay. So then you're going to pull that, and that has made um, a bit of a difference. Oh, it's made a lot of a difference actually. And now you see that it's a perfect, it's a perfect lineup and you don't have that white that, that is bothering your eye. So, um, that's just one way that you can, that you can do that. Um, I thought of that as I was going down, I thought, is, is there a way I can fix that that I didn't show? Um, and to be honest with you, this is the first time I've done that, but I was thinking, why wouldn't it work? Like for sure it would work. So I thought I would pop on and do a little edit here and add that in there. So that's how you can do that to get rid of that one little, um, little line that was in your color change that might be bugging you. <laughs> okay, all right, take care. Keep, keep watching for further instruction. Now then what I do for the top here, at the end, just to fix that off, um, as I thread my needle, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, actually what I do do, sorry, I shouldn't take shortcuts here. I'm going to tie this because this is my, is my, um, live yarn so to speak it's the one i'm working with and and i don't want uh, to to forget about that one too i'm going to do that i'm going to and i do this part when i'm done the whole row okay and then for me i just weave it underneath like this and i don't go back and forth because i always put a border on okay um and that which is the end here and that border will reinforce it Okay, so I'm gonna just grab my scissors here. If you're not doing a border, you want to weave it back and forth a couple of times, just so you, you know it's secure and you're not, it's not gonna come apart 
um, later on through washes and just wear and stuff, okay? So now what I do is I take that end that uh, was there at the beginning and I just grab the top corner of that stitch. And again, this one, and I pull it tight. And then I just tie a knot. I'm gonna lose it out of my needle there. And I tie a knot just like that, and then I hide it. Um, in through the side there again, okay? Now I am, like I said, I'm going to finish this off and then I'm going to do a crochet border around it. If you um, want to learn how to do a crochet, if you don't know how and you wanna learn how to do a crochet border around it, um, go through my videos in, and I'm going to, much at the same time that I post this one, I'm gonna post um, a, a video showing you how I do my, my crochet stitches around my blankets, okay? There's one particular um, pattern that I tend to follow, and so I'm gonna put that one up uh, in a video so that you can learn how to do it too if, you, if you're not sure how to do it, okay? And so if you wanna do that, you go ahead and, and watch for that video. If you wanna just put tassels, I also have a video showing you how to put, um, not tassels, fringes, how to put fringes down the side too. You can do that, that looks beautiful. Or you can just leave it plain like this because we have a beautiful finished edge that we that we um, did with our crochet hook. So it's just gorgeous, absolutely like that too. Another option is you can put little pom-poms just on all four corners. Um, I've seen that done and I haven't done it, but I, I've seen it done and it's it's very, very cute. Um, or put a small little pom-pom on every, on every color change. I might try that actually. I think that would be very cute. Um, put a little pom-pom on every color change um, area and that would be a good idea so so there you go you've um, successfully made a gingham blanket wasn't too hard was it <laughs> we had fun doing it when I, what I would suggest though is that you not purchase this craft smart um, ivory yarn um, I have very very hard time with it it uh, it gives me grief every time and and uh i managed to get through the stitches but i cannot get through them without making a bit of a rippled effect effect it's just a little too coarse um to go through the machine uh and so um no matter what i've done to try it all the different tricks i i get a product that doesn't look that great but i did use it to finish this blanket um and uh i will not use it again i'll use the brunette um, or another um or another uh ivory yarn that feels a little bit softer and less coarse be and less thick because I think that's what makes the difference. Okay, so there you go. Um, thank you for joining me on this tutorial. I hope you um, enjoyed it. Um, uh, check out all the other videos on my, on my channel. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. I'd appreciate that very much. I'm very excited about the, um, the interest that you have all shown in my channel and the number of subscribers that I've already received. So thank you so much, my friends. Um, I just find this to be such a, a beautiful community of, of uh, crafters. So I'm glad to be a part of it and I'm glad you're a part of it as well. So take care, have a great day, and we'll, we'll see you on the next video.